the sun is up and the leaves are down and this crepe myrtle is way too high uh, it's getting in the gutters it's messing with the rain chain so gonna have to trim this back it's a little bit too close to the house to let it go this big so let's see how I can do that I'm gonna need something to cut those branches with all right let's see what tools I have well let's see I got a chainsaw I got a I don't know some sort of wood saw it's all rusted I don't know I don't know what this is great neck Oh, is that a pruning saw? I don't know. Is this a pruning saw? Looks like a maul. Got some cutters here. It's like a razor blade. Oh, it's old Sears craftsman thingy. Let's see. I got a got a hacksaw. Have a gun. I think it's semi-automatic. Oh, you gotta take the safety off here or something, I guess. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it had a safety. Yeah, most guns have a safety. Uh, I got some scissors. I got a hatchet. I think that's for a wedge. It's not really a hammer. I think that's how hatchets work. What do you think? Oh, look, I can think I can... Uh, Pull some nails with it or something, huh? So I got a hatchet. Uh, scissors that I mentioned. Pruning saw, hatchet, pruning saw, hatchet, pruning saw, hatchet, pruning saw, hatchet, pruning saw. All right. Got a M12 fuel hatchet, pruning saw, 2527. All right. Hatchet, pruning saw, 6 inch, 25-27. It looks like a chainsaw, but it is not a chainsaw. Just like those other tools I showed you, they are not, you know, the hatchet is not a hammer, the chainsaw is not a pruning saw, you know, the maul is not a hammer. So, you know, you just, just need to be careful with the tools that you buy. You need to make sure of what they are. I mean, this says it cuts up to three inch hardwoods. I don't know about that. When I did my research and homework, I thought, oh, two inch max. And I never could really find where it was specked out, how much this thing cut. But here it says 3 inch right on the box, so I don't know how I missed that. But I'm willing to bet that 2 inches is about your max. And it is an M12, not an M18. All right, let's get our Milwaukee, uh, what do they call this thing? Fast back. Okay. And uh, cut it open, see what we get. All right, this end is sealed. This end with the tag. There's a little piece of tape on it here. So I bought this at Home Depot. They had the best price. They beat Amazon. Amazon's getting a little bit pricey, uh, even if you're a Prime member. So you need to you need to watch out for Amazon. I mean, they were the go-to product. Looks like Home Depot has finally caught on to them. Alright, let's see what's in the box here. Uh, looks like some cardboard, some paperwork. I always say I'm a guy, so I'm not allowed to read the paperwork. Now nah, guys are not allowed to read the instructions. Alright, ooh, yeah, has a little nice little sheath on there. Oh, it looks pretty good. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. So we have a pruning saw slash hatchet. I guess you could chop with it. I don't know. Maybe that's for the two and three inch pieces of branches that you can cut. 
Looks like we have a big orange tag here. It says fill with uh, chain oil. So I have plenty of thick oil to put in there. Chain oil. Oh, it has a little safety chain doodad thing here. So it's kind of fibery. That's good. That should last a while. Okay. The fill is semi transparent. That's good. Um, I only just briefly looked at the paperwork, so I just kind of happened upon this. This is, uh, you know, for your chain. If you've never used a chainsaw before, it's just typical. There's your, let's see, it's, is that a lock trigger? Oh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a lock trigger, but it's the opposite. So you have to push the button to engage the trigger. So push, trigger. So it's a two-finger operation, and on both sides, a little battery indication. So I guess thumb, or two hands even. Yeah, I guess I might be able to. Yeah, I might be able to do that. Let's look at the chain. Oh, it's one of those chains. Oh, crap, I forgot the name of it. You see how every link has a cutter on it? Here, let me get my chainsaw and, and show you. That's pretty cool. Let me see if it's in the book. All right, I'm zoomed in here. Not too close here. But if you notice, it's like a skip. So there's a cutter. There's a link. There's a cutter in the opposite direction. There's a link. There's a cutter in the opposite direction. And then here we have... Yep, this is flipping. This is flipping too. But it's every link. Every link has a cutter on it. Okay. And now, oh, uh, safety moment. If you learn only one thing before using a chainsaw, this is it. I'm going to tell you right now. This area right here, this is the danger zone. That's right, right in here. Never ever ever cut in this area so if you have your branch do not cut in that way I don't care how much safety equipment you're wearing if that thing kicks back on you you are going to be hating life because I don't know if you've ever been cut by a chainsaw but it is not pretty, no matter how minor, <laughs> and believe me, if you get a minor cut from a chainsaw, you are the luckiest soul on earth. These chainsaws are vicious, absolutely vicious. The next thing I learned about chainsaws, even though this is not a chainsaw, <laughs> is that... Uh, if the chain even touches dirt, it's like it seems like if it gets near dirt, let's just say that the dirt is like an inch away. But anyway, seriously, if the chain hits the ground, dirt, it goes dull immediately. I mean, I, instantaneous. It's freaking crazy how dull a chain will get if it touches the ground. It is totally beyond belief. So it's your standard uh, tensioning, you know, loosen this up and turn the tensioner until it's tight. Oh, wow, it's, it's really well done. All right, good job, factory. Good job, factory. Of course, we have black on black here, which can't read anything. But, you know, it says uh, clockwise tighten, counterclockwise loosen. So... And I guess they're saying that uh, they're giving you a chain direction, I guess, if you replace the chain. So I did not buy an extra chain. Because 
I'm just going to be pruning with it. So I really see it lasting. For me, it should last for years. And this is about all you want. I read somewhere or I saw a video on YouTube or something. People were putting longer blades on here. But I'm not going to do that. That's not what's going to happen in my life because I'm not going to use it to really cut wood. Uh, not even primer wood, you know, to start the fire with. So, uh, you know, we're not... We're not campers. You know, our, di our idea of camping is staying in a motel where the doors are on front of the building. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, we, at least we have a Milwaukee Fuel, and it's an M12. Let me grab a battery. <laughs> I did a Milwaukee battery video, and I forgot the difference between these two as far as if they have a special name, what they're calling them the small ones versus these larger ones but anyway obviously the small ones fit in there and the large ones fit in there too so let's see you can I don't know about standing it up oh it does seem to stand up it's not awkward let me zoom back so it will stand up on the extended battery of course I don't know I don't recommend that and of course this is a not really a handle it's a hand guard here let's see what the book says knuckle guard so that's what that is so let's go over the parts let's see what it says so we have trigger oh trigger handle variable speed trigger lock off button Fuel indicator, body grip, knuckle guard, chain cover, oh, right here, chain cover, chain saw, uh, I'm using the book, chain saw, guide bar, Scubbard. Oh, cool. They're calling that the Scubbard. Chain tensioning screw. Should know what that is. Guide bar nut. Oil cap. And oil reservoir. It's interesting. They're not showing the tool on the functional description. But anyway, there's a tool. All right, they're saying this thing, woo, this thing will run at 2650 RPM. Wow. Chain speed is 984 feet per minute. Man, that is really cooking right along. Holy cow. That, that's some serious stuff going on there. All right, they give the replacement bar number. Chain gauge is 0 0.043 inches. Oh, good, yeah. All right, well, that's pretty good. Uh, replacement chain number is 49-16-27-32, which I did not see in stock anywhere. Oh, speaking of in stock, um, Home Depot typically um stocks one of these maybe some of your large city stores might have two but i live near lynchburg they had one roanoke had one charlottesville had one richmond had two danville had one so and the southwestern metropolitan areas here in virginia each home depot only had one so check your store before you go there and so you know you could even buy and pick it up or of course buy it online that's easy too uh, i think yeah the price is high enough where uh you know you, I, I think that qualifies for free shipping
So even though this is not a chainsaw, the book just goes on and on and on and on and on like it is a chainsaw. But really, please remember that it's not a chainsaw. And that three inches, that, that seems to be pushing it to me, but what do I know? All right, on the continuous chain, I need to go look that up. Let me, let me see what that's called. Okay, well, there's plenty of learning for me to do, I can tell you that. So what I went to look up is the difference between uh, a regular chainsaw that I just showed you and this guy. And so they are calling a link on every chain a full house chain. And then the chain link that I showed you on my chainsaw, they're calling a skip tooth. However, there's also a standard and full skip, and it just goes on and on and on. The chisels are different, and of course, I knew chains were different. I never really paid attention to it, though. I just, uh, you know, bought what I needed for my saw when I was using the cheap poolings, you know, and now I got a steel. But anyway, um, so I never really paid attention to that, you know, and I just I just used them. I just stayed within their working parameters and went on and used them. So, wow, you can really educate yourself on chains if you want to. But anyway, I purchased this as a pruning tool. I'm going to get out there on that crepe myrtle, uh, shoot a few scenes of me using the device and uh, sum up the video so uh, kind of showed you the features a little bit showed you that I'm just you know a regular guy homeowner I'm not some you know big landscaping kind of guy or big chainsaw kind of guy or anything like that just introduce you to this tool and let it go at that. So let me uh, let me pull the trigger, see where it goes. And I have no oil in it, so I'm just gonna pull the trigger and see what happens. All right. Well, make some noise. Zoomed right along. Seems like it's going to be a nice little tool. I guess I'll just uh, get outside and cut some branches off. All right, in case you didn't know, um, these tools come with like a screwdriver. If this thing gets stuck, or maybe you have gloves that make it difficult for you to turn this, you know, it, it has like a little place for you to stick your screwdriver tool in. So there's that. Then what I do is I buy the uh, chain oil by the gallon and I put it in a little uh, quart jar which you can see over the years has faded away to nothing. But this is my chain oil. I see cha. <laughs> I can see cha in there. Um, uh, maybe I can make out chain oil. <laughs> so anyway, let me pour a little bit of that in there. So let's see if I can spill some oil all over my new saw here. Yay! Oh boy, that filled up fast. Wow, okay. All right, and I spilled it on my chains, on my pruning tool. So that's good. That's one way to break a tool in, huh? All right. All right, got that cleaned off. Get my safety glasses. Get my pruning saw gloves. All right, I'm gonna give a little test run with the oil, see how much oil flies off the chain. Now I know with my steel, it's much better than the pooling. The pooling would like crap oil all over the place, even when it was brand new. I mean, oil would just fly everywhere. And then I got the steel, and it's much more controlled. Very little oil. I can barely see oil on it. it, it I wouldn't say it comes off the chain. 
I mean, it's definitely getting lubed and I don't know, but it, it just doesn't make a whole lot of mess. You don't see like a line here. So let's see what this one does. Oh yeah, you got to pull the trigger. See that dripping? That's some alcohol that I used to clean up with. So. All right, I do see a little bit. Let me zoom in here. All right, don't confuse the shadow with the line of oil. So let me get this line going again here. Gosh, I really don't even know if you can see it. So I, I got an initial splash, but then it stopped. And it's definitely oiled. I can feel it. So it's definitely oiled up and it's working. So excellent, excellent, excellent on that. So out we go to the crepe myrtle and cut some branches off. Okay, just in case you see me outside, I'm going to have earmuffs on. I wear glasses, so I'm not going to put on any side shields. Ah! But I'm just going to be pruning. However, since I'm dealing with the chain, I definitely wear gloves. I wear worn gloves pretty much all my life, so that's not an issue. So we'll put on some gloves and get on out there and do a demo. Mostly going to be a demo because when I'm working, I, I can't film and work at the same time. So anyway, let's go outside. Okay, a car might go by or something. Uh, the DB on this thing kind of says it's louder than what I think it is, but that's okay. I'm also going to kind of be holding it up, so I hope that doesn't affect the oil too much. But let's give it a try. Just have some small branches. If I can, uh, two hands. Upside down. All right, so that's my first try at it. Got a little, got to deal with the trigger quite a bit and uh, dealing with how I'm going to cut. Got to think about it some more and do it properly. Well, it looks like once you get going and start getting your brain into it and forget that you're actually filming a video, it looks like it's going to go okay. All right, now that I'm using it, I see that uh, what you need to do is uh, just be close to the edge here, or at the bottom. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it has some teeth. If you're cutting, I guess, a two or three inch branch, you can really dig in like a chainsaw. But this is not a chainsaw. <laughs> Well, you know, like all lawn equipment, you know, the safety stuff is a real pain in the butt. For me, that switch is absolutely horrific to get around. So, you know, don't do anything stupid like bypass it. You know, you don't want to do that. Okay, we're all done with the crepe myrtle. Boy, that was less than a half an hour to cut all those branches down. And what I learned was that... The closer you stay to the hilt, the quicker and faster it cuts. So that uh, really comes into play here. Uh, you can see the debris that's on there. Hopefully I stayed on camera. So it's just stay near the hilt here and it zips right off. Otherwise you're fighting it and it kind of jumps a little bit. 
Also, don't bypass any safeties, you know. <laughs> also, I had a branch get caught in there, so I took off the cover. I, I loosened it up, took the screw off, got the branch that went right down in there and jammed everything, took that off. Uh, but actually, that was my last cut. <laughs> so now it's now I've put it together, and let's see if it still works. Yep, still works. Where's the discharge suit shoot? I don't know if you can see it because I, I deliberately got out of the sunlight. So I'm very, very happy with it. I still have a lot of things to pick up. But anyway, just the cutting part of it, the tool part of it, uh, went very quickly. Very, very, I am very, very happy with the saw's performance. Did an outstanding job. Knocked it, knocked it right out. And I cut it that short because that's how tall I am. I didn't want to get on a ladder. We have a sloping yard here, and it'll be fine in the spring. I promise you that. Okay, so you can see I used about half capacity in oil, let's say. Here are the sticks that ran down the chain, got jammed in there, got them out. Um, remember, don't... Uh, I pass the safety switch like I did. No, I didn't do that. Came like that. <laughs> uh, for me, it's great because I don't have to do the shears, you know, muscle, and the older you get. You know, the less you want to do stuff like that, so. Milwaukee Fuel Hatchet and Pruning Saw. Very good for me. Very nice. Thank you for watching.